Beneath the surface of Naples lies a confirmed supervolcano, now officially classified as one of the planet's greatest eruption threats. Three million people live in its shadow while sensors show the ground itself is rising and the air is growing hotter. Some experts want to drill straight into its depths, hoping to prevent a cataclysm, but risking disaster with a single mistake. Could this bold plan be the answer? Or will it trigger the very event it is meant to prevent? The stakes have never been higher. The director of the Vesuvius Observatory stands at the center of this crisis, his words carrying the weight of official responsibility. When he describes Campi Flegre as a supervolcano, it is more than a scientific label. It is an admission that the threat beneath Naples is not just local, but global in scope. The caldera's ancient eruptions once scattered ash as far as Moscow. Today, the risk is measured not in distant history, but in the lives of those packed into the narrow streets and aging buildings of the region. Over 650,000 people live within 10 kilometers of the caldera's rim, with neighborhoods like Pazuoli and Bacoli sitting directly above zones of greatest danger. The broader Naples metropolitan area, stretching outward, brings the total population at risk to over 3 million. This is one of the densest urban concentrations near any active volcano on Earth. Every census map, every emergency plan, traces the outline of a community living shoulder to shoulder with potential catastrophe. When official bulletins refer to Campi Flegre's hazard level, they do so with a careful choice of language. The term supervolcano is not a legal designation in Italy, but its use by the observatory director signals a new urgency in risk assessment. For residents, the title lands like a warning siren. It means that the ground beneath their homes is capable of an eruption powerful enough to disrupt global climate and threaten millions. The human scale of this hazard is measured not just in numbers, but in daily routines lived under a shadow that is now officially too large to ignore. Sensitive instruments installed across Campi Flegre record changes invisible to the eye, but impossible to ignore. Since 2005, ground sensors around Pozzuoli have tracked steady uplift, one centimeter each month, enough to distort roads and stress-building foundations. This slow inflation, known as Bradyseism, is the volcano's warning sign. Every fraction of a centimeter matters. The ground is not simply rising, it is being pushed by forces below, hinting at pressure building in the system. Seismic monitors pick up a growing chorus of small earthquakes, some shallow enough to rattle windows and unsettle nerves. The pattern is clear. Earthquake swarms are becoming more frequent, and their average depth is creeping upward. In May 2024, a magnitude 4.4 quake struck at just 2.6 kilometers below the surface, the strongest recorded in the area since modern monitoring began. At the surface, fumaroles vent superheated gases, their temperatures now reaching 96 degrees Celsius. Temperature logs show a steady climb, closely linked to the rising ground and increased seismicity. Gas samples reveal carbon dioxide fluxes among the highest ever measured at Solfatara up to 5,000 tons per day. These are not abstract numbers. Each spike in temperature or gas output is a signal of energy moving upward, of magma or hydrothermal fluids pressing against the crust. Seismic tomography paints the most sobering picture, a body of magma detected just 3.9 kilometers beneath the caldera. The combination of shallow magma, persistent ground uplift, and escalating gas release is not hypothetical. The hazard is active, present, and intensifying, all captured in the relentless stream of data from the observatory's instruments. Long before Naples became a modern city, Campi Flegre shaped the fate of Europe. Nearly 39,000 years ago, the volcano unleashed the Campanian Ignimbrite eruption, one of the largest in human prehistory. Ash from that single event blanketed the continent, settling as far away as Moscow, 
and leaving a layer that still appears in soil cores across Eastern Europe. The eruption did not just darken the skies. It likely altered ancient climates, disrupted ecosystems, and may have even influenced the course of early human migration. Yet today, the true scale of this threat is easy to overlook. Unlike the iconic cone of Vesuvius, Campi Flegrae's caldera is a subtle depression, a landscape of rolling hills, urban sprawl, and hidden craters. Without a towering peak, the danger feels abstract and almost invisible to those living above it. But the evidence is written in the earth, thick deposits of volcanic tuff, fossilized forests buried in ash, and the remnants of ancient settlements abandoned in the wake of disaster. The contrast is stark. Vesuvius looms as a constant reminder, but Campi Flegrae's most devastating power is hidden in plain sight, capable of global disruption, yet largely overlooked by daily life. The past is not distant here. It is a warning etched into the ground beneath every street and building, a reminder that what happened once could happen again on a scale that reaches far beyond the Bay of Naples. Italy's most ambitious evacuation rehearsal, Exi Flegrei, unfolded in October 2023. Planners mapped out a scenario meant to move thousands from the Campi Flegrei red zone in three days. Only 1,500 residents took part, a fraction of those who would need to leave in a real emergency. The exercise was designed to test every layer of the official doctrine, including staged departure, priority for hospitals and care homes, and seamless transfer to host towns across the country. But the after-action reports told a different story. Congestion at highway exits stretched travel times by up to 200%. Key arteries like SS7 and Via Domitiana became choke points even under controlled conditions. Emergency vehicles struggled to reach designated pickup points. Communications between local, regional, and national agencies faltered as simulated alerts escalated. Compliance rates dropped sharply outside the central danger zones, with some neighborhoods seeing less than half of residents respond to evacuation orders. The plan assumed orderly departures by private car, yet traffic simulations showed gridlock as soon as self-evacuation began. Medical transport lagged behind targets, leaving vulnerable groups waiting hours for assistance. Shelter capacity in host municipalities already stretched could not accommodate the projected influx. In the best-case scenario, more than 30% of the population remained in place after 72 hours if just one major route was blocked. The drill's timeline relied on perfect weather, intact infrastructure, and near-universal cooperation, conditions unlikely to hold during a true crisis. Giovanni Mastro Lorenzo, a senior volcanologist with INGV, reviewed the drill's findings with undisguised frustration. He told reporters, not ready for a sudden evacuation. He pointed to the optimistic 72-hour warning window at the heart of the plan. Recent eruptions in similar calderas, he noted, have unfolded with far less notice. In Campi Flegre, the models used to predict escalation have failed more often than not. The gap between official doctrine and lived reality grows wider with each test, leaving public confidence in the system deeply shaken. A magnitude 4.4 earthquake sounds moderate on paper, but in Pozzuoli, this number became a test of survival. The ground shook for less than 10 seconds, Yet hundreds of buildings cracked or lost chunks of plaster. At least 500 people found themselves sleeping in cars, tents, or a municipal gym, too afraid or unable to return home. For one family living near the Solfatara crater, the ordeal began with a jolt that sent dishes crashing and lights swinging. Their apartment, already scarred by earlier tremors, felt suddenly unsafe. Aftershocks arrived every few hours, each one a fresh wave of panic. Civil protection texts contradicted radio updates, leaving them unsure whether to stay or flee. By midnight, they packed into their car, joining a line of headlights snaking toward the city's edge. The next night, after a sleepless vigil in a crowded gym, they tried to evacuate again, 
only to find key roads blocked by debris and traffic at a standstill. Out of options, they returned home, recording their exhaustion and fear on a phone camera. Their story, widely shared, captured the confusion and helplessness that statistics rarely show. The numbers behind these quakes reveal why scientists worry. The magnitude scale is logarithmic. Each whole number jump means about 32 times more energy. So a magnitude 5 quake would release over 30 times the energy of maze 4.4. If the ground shakes at magnitude 6, it is not just a little worse. It is roughly 1,000 times more powerful than that May event. In a city where buildings are already damaged and escape routes run over active faults, that kind of escalation could bring down entire blocks and make evacuation impossible. For families like the one in Pozzuoli, the math is more than academic. Every uptick in magnitude means more broken homes, longer nights in makeshift shelters, and rising uncertainty about what tomorrow brings. In the neighborhoods closest to Campy Flay Gray, the decision to stay is rarely about denial. For many, leaving means abandoning family roots that go back generations, homes inherited and rebuilt after each earthquake, and livelihoods tied to the land and sea. Economic reality makes relocation impossible for thousands. Property values have plummeted, insurance is out of reach, and government support for voluntary evacuation remains limited. Even when cracks appear in the walls and the ground shifts beneath their feet, most residents have nowhere else to go. Surveys conducted after the May 2024 earthquake found that nearly 70% of Pozzuoli's population expressed reluctance to leave, even if authorities issued a mandatory evacuation. Some cited the memory of the 1980 Irpinia earthquake, when many evacuated for weeks only to return to damaged but standing homes. Others referenced the Icelandic precedent where residents received 30,000 euros to relocate from volcanic hazard zones, a sum that for most in Campania is unimaginable. Italy has no comparable compensation scheme and rental prices outside the red zone have soared in anticipation of future displacement. The buildings themselves are as vulnerable as the people inside. Civil protection inventories list over 1,200 structures in the immediate hazard zone as high risk for seismic collapse, and another 2,700 at medium risk. Most are unreinforced masonry, built before modern codes, or added onto illegally over decades. Engineers admit they lack precise data on how these homes will perform if ground shaking intensifies. Each aftershock reveals new weaknesses, but comprehensive retrofitting has stalled for years. This fragile infrastructure, combined with deep social and economic ties, means that any evacuation plan faces a double barrier, not just moving people out, but convincing them to leave it all. As pressure builds beneath the caldera, the gap between official preparedness and everyday reality grows wider, leaving the region's future hanging in the balance. Dr. Robert Bodner stands by his plan, drill at least 10 boreholes, each plunging three kilometers into the restless ground of Campi Flegre. The proposal calls for high-strength casing, advanced blowout preventers, e-stores, and real-time seismic monitoring engineering designed to match the challenges of fractured, superheated rock. Bodner points to Iceland's Krafla field, where geothermal wells of similar depth have operated for decades. Without triggering major eruptions, he cites the Iceland Deep Drilling Project, which reached supercritical fluids at over two kilometers, producing only minor, unfelt tremors. In his view, Campi Fligre's pressure cooker system could be managed the same way, relieve hydrothermal pressure, reduce ground uplift, and perhaps quiet the earthquake swarms that have battered Pozzuoli and its neighbors. Yet the critics are not convinced. They warn that the comparison to Iceland is dangerously simplistic. Campi Flegre's caldera is older, less predictable, and sits beneath a far denser population. 
The Basel project in Switzerland, often left out of optimistic presentations, is their cautionary tale. There, a single geothermal well at five kilometers depth triggered more than 10,000 microquakes and a magnitude 3.4 event, enough to crack walls and force a shutdown, all in a city with no volcanic threat. If similar seismicity erupted beneath Naples, thousands of already damaged buildings could collapse and evacuation routes could be blocked in minutes. Bodner's team counters that robust well design, multiple casing strings, high temperature cement, and staged cementing can minimize risk. Automated shutoff systems and strict stop criteria would halt drilling at the first sign of trouble, but the opposing camp points to the magma detected just 3.9 kilometers below the surface. Any miscalculation, they argue, could open a pathway for superheated fluids, or even magma, to surge upward. No model can guarantee safety when the system's behavior is so poorly understood. The debate is not just technical. Each precedent, whether Iceland's quiet success or Basel's seismic scare, serves as ammunition in a battle over risk, responsibility, and the future of a city living atop a sleeping giant. The question remains, can engineering tame the forces beneath Campi Flegre, or will the attempt itself become the next chapter in its long history of upheaval? Billions of euros may lie beneath Campi Flegre, locked in lithium-rich brines and rare earth minerals. The promise of this resource has quietly reshaped the conversation around deep drilling. Industry white papers and government reports reference these reserves in the fine print, and multinational mining consortia have already filed for exploration permits. For some, the economic opportunity is too large to ignore. Italy imports nearly all its lithium, and the energy transition has sent prices soaring. Advocates for drilling point to these numbers as a way to justify the risks, arguing that extraction could fund safety upgrades, evacuation infrastructure, and even long-term relocation for those most exposed. But this financial logic sits uneasily with residents who remember what happened in other geothermal projects. Toxic gases like hydrogen sulfide and sulfur dioxide, along with heavy metals dissolved in brines, threaten to contaminate the Gulf of Pozzuoli and the region's aquifers. Environmental scientists warn that drilling into a superheated, chemically complex system could unleash more than just minerals. Past geothermal wells in volcanic zones have triggered blowouts, releasing plumes of gas and clouds of acidic steam. If containment fails, pollutants could spread through groundwater, affecting fisheries, agriculture, and drinking water for thousands. The environmental cost, difficult to predict, impossible to reverse, hangs so by with us, all barfers hangs over every technical briefing and public meeting. The largest obstacle, though, is uncertainty itself. Scientists tasked with forecasting eruptions at Campi Flegrei face an 80% failure rate in their models. Warning times have ranged from days to mere minutes, and no current system can reliably distinguish between harmless unrest and the first signs of disaster. This knowledge gap leaves both the drilling proposal and the evacuation plans on shaky ground. Economic stakeholders argue for calculated risk. Residents demand guarantees no one can provide, as the debate circles around money, pollution, and the limits of prediction. The region is left with a decision that grows more tangled by the day, one where every option carries its own hazards and no path forward is free of consequence. Today, millions live atop a restless caldera, as experts debate whether human intervention can outpace nature's timetable. With magma confirmed just four kilometers below and evacuation plans under strain, each decision carries unprecedented risk. The line between prevention and provocation blurs. In a world growing more crowded and volatile, the true danger may lie in believing we still control the outcome. Let us know your thoughts below.